What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and today I'm going to be talking through some tips for improving your Narbash gameplay. Now, I've never advertised myself as the best player out there, so if you have anything you would like to add, or if you think anything I say here is wrong, please feel free to let me know and I will truly take your advice into consideration. I'm certainly not the authority on all things Narbash, but I do feel like I'm good enough to pass along some information that has helped me with my particular playstyle. If you've chosen to main support, I salute you. It's a very necessary yet often underappreciated role. You're the lineman of the team, not the quarterback. No one is going to notice you unless you fuck up and the ADC gets sacked. Prepare for a mobile life where you rarely receive gratitude. No one ever notices when you're playing your ass off, but they will surely flame you when you miss one stun out of 20. You'll know though. You'll see that last minute rush in to save someone with a shield. You'll see that amazing max range thunk that stops a Kwong in his tracks before he can ult your ADC from behind. You'll leave the game knowing that without you, that win would not have been possible. If you enjoy the video, please hit that like button and subscribe. Let's start out with Aspects. Even after it was nerfed, I always take Magician on Daddy Bash for the mana regen. I've had a few occasions where I thought I didn't need it and picked another aspect and have regretted it every time. Maybe it's a crutch, but it's one that I personally rely on. The second aspect I pick depends on if I know my carry. If I'm duo queued with someone that's a shit hot ADC player, I'll take the bishop aspect in order to give them extra attack speed. However, if I'm solo queued or queued with someone that I know sucks at ADC, I go with Templar for the shared armor. You have to think of the worst case scenario when choosing between these aspects. Worst case if you take Templar is that you get paired with a great ADC who misses out on that attack speed but still gets the benefit of Templar's armor. Worst case for Bishop is that you get me as your ADC and all that attack speed just means even more missed shots. Basically you can't go wrong with Templar, you can with Bishop. As far as items go, I really don't like to put out an end-all be-all build. As a support, much of what you take will depend on several outside factors. Your team's composition, the enemy team's comp, if you're ahead, if you're playing from behind, how coordinated your team is, all kinds of shit. I'll make some suggestions here, but please don't take this as me saying that these items are always the best. I start out with a scry stone and a mana pot. You can sub in an omni pot for the mana pot if you're worried about your health but you can keep yourself up as Narbash if you have plenty of mana. The Scry Stone is the one item I would say is essential. It gives you gold when you heal or shield your allies or damage heroes at the cost of reduced gold gain from last hitting. Specifically, you gain a stack of valor every 10 seconds up to three stacks. Each stack counts for 25 gold and is consumed whenever you cast a heal or shield or if you deal damage to a hero. I love the idea behind this item. It gives supports a much needed way of advancing economy while still discouraging last hitting, something you sure as hell shouldn't be doing anyway. It should be noted you only consume the stacks if your heal and shield connects with someone who is in combat, otherwise you gotta deal some damage. Blessings of the Divine and Robes of Miracles are also two staples that I almost always take. Blessings gives you mana regen, health regen, 30 physical armor, and 45 energy armor that stacks with favor, the, uh, the energy armor does, and it has an active that allows you to provide a shield to yourself and everyone around you. Robe of Miracles gives you 10% cooldown reduction, 350 health that stacks with favor, health regen, and another 40 energy armor. The active on Miracles is an AoE pulse of percentage based healing. Everyone within a 700 unit radius around you gets 20% of their max health instantly. These two are versatile and useful enough for any match really. Boots are something you're going to want as well. Haste is my preferred for the cooldown reduction, but I do sometimes take Warlock's Wares, the uh, blue boots. That's if we're well ahead and I'm going to be a little ultra violent. Other than that, it's up to you. If the enemy team has a counter that's out of control, build into Mana Muzzle. If they keep hitting you with a big AoE wombo combo, Radiant Poise is great for the team-wide stasis. It's pretty rare that a game goes long enough for the support to go full build, so just use your noggin, take what you need, when you need it, and can hopefully afford it. Now let's go over how to level your abilities. 
I usually unlock Thunk first, then Song of My People, then March. After that, I prioritize well, Crash Bang Boom, of course, then Thunk, then March, and then Song of My People. I know it seems odd that the heal is last, but trust me, people that play the shit out of Narbash are nodding their heads in agreement right now. Both Thunk and March will prevent far more damage than Song will ever heal. Song is great for keeping your ADC topped off and giving your team an edge in sustained teamfights, but it's not going to save anyone's ass. A well-placed Thunk can not only save a teammate, but it can also set up a kill. Same goes with a well-timed March. I start off every game by warding for my jungler in case of an invade. This is why I usually unlock Thunk first. Sometimes you run into that invasion and it's nice to hit him in the face and run. You'll have two wards if you go with these starting items that I suggested, so don't be afraid to use them. Ward deep though. I see a lot of people just flicking wards over the fog wall. I used to do this too, but Windu brought to my attention that it pretty much does nothing, and I totally agree with him. By the time that ward sees anyone, it's too late. Shove them bitches deep along the paths that the junglers and mid laners like to take to gank your lane. Know the wards don't ping, but it'll show people on the minimap. As long as you're paying attention, you'll see them well enough in advance to be prepared. This should go without saying, but don't take your ADC's last hits. Your power comes from intelligent use of your abilities. The ADC's power comes from mindlessly buying more and more powerful items. That probably just triggered some folks. Let them get that gold. If you took Scrystone, you ain't getting much gold from those last hits anyway. Same goes for hero kills. Do everything you can to allow your ADC to get any kills on heroes. The only time you should be picking up a kill is if no one else is around or it's 100% obvious that your carry ain't going to get the job done. The perfect game for a support should end with having zero kills, zero deaths, and an assist in every kill. That's probably never going to happen of course, but that's what you're shooting for. Always notify when you're backing. Ping it multiple times so that your carry either sees it or you can tell him to fuck off when he gets all pissy at you for, for backing without telling him. Also notify missing. Even if you think that they just went back to buy items or something and you just didn't see them back, still notify missing just to give everybody a heads up that you don't have eyes on the enemy duo. Something mid laners can do to help the support is also ping when you back so that the support knows to be extra careful of a mid lane rotation. If you think you can safely take an objective, ping it. If you and your carrier are going to rotate to mid lane, ping it. If your ADC is going fucking Rambo and you just saw the enemy jungler and mid laner rotating together, ping retreat like mad. Using the notification system will drastically increase your win rate when playing any role, not just support. Narbash's most iconic and useful ability is Thunk. You'll see a lot of people throwing these out like crazy with little to no effect and calling themselves aggressive. This can be useful at times if you have an ADC that can follow up, but for the most part, all you're doing is wasting mana and giving the enemy jungler a 12 second window of uninterrupted access to your butthole. Just try to read your carry. If they're all about going for them kills and they're getting work done when you thunk, then go for it. Match your carry's aggression. It just isn't really my style. Using Thunk prematurely, especially if you're past the halfway point of your lane, is very dangerous and should only be done if you know you can set up a kill. It can also be a pain in the ass for your ADC if you're constantly thunking enemies when they're trying to freeze the lane and farm. Every time you throw a useless thunk, the enemy minions chase you, your minions chase them, and your ADC ends up missing a last hit. It's fucking annoying. Use your thunks wisely, don't drag the damn minions around. With that being said, you will probably need to use Thunk from time to time to consume your Scrystone stacks. If that's the case, try to position yourself away from the minion wave so you don't disrupt the ADC. You should also always save enough mana for a Thunk. I've been doing a very poor job of this recently due to the changes in Magician, throwing me off a bit, but as I mentioned before, a single Thunk will prevent more damage than Song can heal, so don't waste all your mana healing someone. I keep Thunk on quick cast so there is no wind up time. This is a personal preference, but I think you'll like it if you try it. I missed like crazy this particular game because I knew I was making this video and I was trying way too hard. To hit your thunks, follow through. Keep your eye on the target from start to finish, and don't get too down on yourself if you miss one. 
When you're in the laning phase and the enemy support starts to engage on your ADC, ignore the support and thunk the carry. The support isn't going to have enough ass to finish your ADC, so be smart and stop the real damage from coming through. You may even be able to turn the tides. When in team fights, only use thunk to set up a kill if you know your ADC is safe. Otherwise, save it so that you can save them. Also, keep your eye on anyone with high impact interruptible abilities. <clears throat> Gideon. You may have to make a hard choice and hold a thunk that can save one person so that you can use it to save the entire team. Crash Bang Boom can be very effective at saving asses, setting up kills, or simply zoning. However, you'll be beating on that drum for a while. You cannot rely on the stun. Just count it as a nice bonus when it does hit. I use my ultimate preemptively sometimes. Right here, I used Thunk on Steel because he was deep in our team, but Gideon was watching me like a hawk. I started Crash Bang Boom not because I thought I was going to hit anyone, but to simply dissuade Gideon from using Black Hole until Thunk was back off of cooldown. Always be aware of who can interrupt your ultimate and try to save it for when they use that interrupt. In this clip, I was duo queued with the Sparrow, that's a uh, Gathesan right there. The enemy Narbash was throwing thunks pretty much on cooldown, so I let my ADC know that as soon as the interrupt was used, I was going to go hard. Conversely, the steel in this game was always on the lookout for my ultimate and interrupted the crap out of me constantly. Cheers man, good game. When taking the Raptor or Prime, you should be tanking the damage for your team unless you have someone tankier or like a Kai with lifesteal. Keep your heal rolling, but always be on the lookout for anyone trying to come in and steal the objective. Late game, your team can usually handle these objectives on their own, and you ain't going to be doing shit for damage, so if your healing isn't needed, post up outside the pit and run interference so the enemy team can't get an easy steal. This will vary from time to time, but for the most part, your role in a late game team fight is to keep enemies off of your squishies. This is what people mean when they say peel. Most of the time you'll be peeling for your ADC, but remember that you're there to support the entire team. Items like Blessings of the Divine and Miracles can quickly turn the tides of battle if you can position yourself to benefit everyone. Speed boost everyone to catch up when you're winning or get them all to safety if things are looking grim. You'll have a unique perspective on the battle as the support, so use your pings to warn your team if you think they're walking into a trap or guide them towards an objective after winning a team fight. Read your team throughout the game. Know who you can and cannot save. More specifically, know who's worth saving. This is going to sound harsh, but if your ADC ain't cutting it but your mage is blowing holes in the enemy team, maybe focus a bit more on keeping that Gideon up and leave the carry to their own devices. Our Murdoch in this game was pretty good, I don't want anyone thinking I'm busting his specific chops, uh, but shout out to Forsaken Shiki, uh, uh, the, the Gideon in this game. First game of fault I've ever played with him and he did fantastic. If at any time you get caught out in an unwinnable situation, just run around like crazy, keep your heal rolling, speed boost while jumping around erratically, land a random thunk that kills someone, and scream a lot. For real though, if you know you're fucked, you have two options. Either die as fast as possible so you can res with your team, or if you have teammates still alive in the area, waste as much of the enemy's time as you can so your team can get away. That's all I have for now, I'm sure I missed like a million things, so please, please let me know your tips in the comments below. Let's all improve together as a community. I hope you enjoyed this little guide. If you want to see more, just let me know. But for now, this is the Mangu signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoos!